Well, <clears throat> this is another solo. I'm, Vinny was supposed to come visit me here at the Dork Table on the RLM tonight. But it's my night, your day. But he didn't show up. So I'm going to do something for a while. I'm not, I wasn't really expecting Vinny to not show up. So um, here's my little stall so I can do the date and the table and all that stuff. Anyway, I'd like to say something about Mr. Woody picking up a, a little time on the radio. It's, he was telling us wonderful stories about legs being broken and people that fight. Stuff like that. You know, all that American stuff. Growing up, we all did some of it to some point, I suppose. Anyway, here we go. Okay, we're going to do a solo dork table on the Real Liberty Media and like thank Grim and Woody there for the uh, you're a hard act to follow though Mr. Woodman anyway we'll start out with the old hellos and uh we're over on Spreaker and other places we're I don't really care too much about all that stuff too much. but it's nice that Grim and Mary and Vincent and Circle and everybody else does because I, I don't really take all this too seriously. So, if you can hear me, I'm going to start pitching away saying hi to the RLM crowd. We got Barman, Grimner, Moose Girl, Kate, Trust Number One, Phantom, Anti, Asmo, Chloe, Chalcedony, Chloe Colfax 101. Uh, my favorite cyborg noodle apox. D underscore C. Adon. Dakota. Death spawn. Death spawn, really? Echelon. I had to come on as Flash Nasty to open the other computer to listen to the uh, Woody show. So I'm here too, Flash Nasty. And then we got Frumpy. Graham Z. I be Don C double dipping. Java Doctor Java Doctor 2. Look at this. I'm getting doubles everywhere. J's Nines J's Wanna Taco. Kozu Meister Brow. Mmm. Pox Box Poxified Poxophone. Pawn Sauce Rain. Uh the fluke is uh the fluke is here. Hmm. Uh we got Rob Works. The Sock Puppet, Skittle, huh? and me, Some Booty. <laughs> Thanks, Cirque. <laughs> that name just makes my tumor bleed. Ah, no show, Vincent. No, he didn't show up today, Miss Kate, to, uh, but he, this was his idea. But I don't know. I've got enough crap on my mind. I could probably do a, a bit of a show. And uh, we already had the Woodman on here, and you know, entertaining us with war stories. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I didn't mean to to be so critical where you took it so serious. This is throwing my opinions of what I heard. And I know you're a salesman, but at the last of the thing you didn't record, you seem to get a little stuttery. I do it. I know what it is because I do it too. So just wanted you to know because. When I do the show, I don't really hear myself. But if I play it back later, then I go, wow, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> and life goes on. But all day long, I've had this idea in the back of my head about this um, living in within the confines of the borders of a country. And I bring it up because... I consider myself to have a unique uh, family history because one of my parents never naturalized. She always kept her citizenship back in the motherland of England. So she lived in America, hmm, I guess, from 57 to 82 before she, her and my dad, they decided to live in England. So for all those years... I had the upbringing of an English parent, but uh, none of that paperwork to um, bully you around with, like with an American thing. You got 
people fighting tooth and nail to become Americans. Then you got people like me that, you know, I make the best of having been born there, but I try not to let it go to my head because of the power of the documents. Now, in my mind, I sometimes wonder if my mom didn't become a, an American, then how come I did? <laughs> so, it, it after, hey, there goes Hannah. At, sh hey, quiet you butt nugget. Anyway, so, after the all the years, uh, I would expect, you know, one country would want my document over the other, and that would be the end of it. But when Obama was president, <laughs> things took a shift. And what was once the right of the father became the right of the mother. If you were born on or before a certain day. And it was me that was born before the, the date changed. So it went from your father's being the parental right to, if you're English, to your mother, if you were born after Obama's birthday. And my little brother was born after Obama's birthday. He entailed, well, I don't know, he got some kind of special treatment from the English more than I did, but I didn't really look for it. He was specifically trying to use his family ties to... Uh, to get somewhere in England, so to speak. Me, I just show them the passport and go where I'm going. I'm not, I don't join shit. And I don't know. I guess you'd have to know me more than just Radio Land to uh, really understand how how deeply this uh, belief in the state really goes with me. I don't have much faith in it, and I roll my eyes about everything that I read. But it's happening. So, what are we going to do? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've tried giving some pointers, like living in an honest life. No, that does never goes anywhere. People don't even talk about it. And that that comes from, I believe, our societies, are they're lie-based. They're all based on deceit and fraud. If they told you the truth, exactly the way it's done, and told it to you, you would fight it tooth and nail. So, what they the government does is somehow they own us through these magic documents you know they give you a, a little piece of paper and it's got pretty colors on it and your picture's behind plastic and you can't change it and you can't this and it's got watermarks and it costs enough money you can probably eat for a week but <laughs> these documents define us in society so i don't know it's very hard to uh, take it real seriously because just because i don't have a document i don't see how that makes me any better or worse than anybody else but that's the training that we've gone through to get where we are now that's what i think still don't understand why uh Obama could make a thing like that happen while he's sitting in power and, and nobody noticed. <laughs> when I told my brother about it, he said, what the fuck are you talking about? I never heard of this crap. So he talked to his lawyers and his lawyers said, yeah, hey, I know. yeah, thank you. My, yeah, my wife just barged into the house from the outside world. She was uh, visiting with her sister. <laughs> so she came in a little bit later than usual tonight. And just wanted everybody on the RLM to know she's still alive. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Who's in a heap? Oh, let's see. I'm going to read some chat because I don't know how to completely explain uh, these ideas I have about this. Because you live on a bit of dirt and these guys with the guns claim that they own it, your birthright is limited to what they tell you it is. That's where I was trying to go with it, is uh, we've just basically been 
kidnapped in in a sense unless you go along with it then if you go along with it i call that indoctrinated if you buy the game and you pitch the game and you live the game and you want everybody else to die and go to prison you're probably living in america right now if you don't <laughs> you're probably on your way to america right now i i don't know there's a lot more people that I think it's a story, you know, people like to visit and whatnot, but I can't understand why anybody would want to leave here to go there unless they're completely sold on what newspapers tell them, or maybe new TV, or they're starstruck, or band struck, or hey, maybe they're in love with Donald Trump, you know, that the girl wants to go to Washington, D.C. so that she could sleep with the president. <laughs> Only it's a guy. <laughs> and the president has orange hair. <laughs> oh, yeah, good. I'm glad. Rip Woody says he recorded. I'm going to do a commercial break here for the new guy on the RLM radio program, Mr. Woody Meisterbrow. Hmm. Probably saying his name wrong, too, because that's not how Moose says it. She always corrects crap I say wrong. <laughs> I got my own personal grammar police, and she doesn't even want to be a police. Well, maybe she does. Hmm. Oh, it's not so much criticism, <clears throat> Woody, as it is. Uh, I've done it. I, I, I've seen it. I know what I'm talking about. I recognize your your pitch, you know. And it's, when you're just doing something separate from work, it doesn't come across exactly the same. But I knew what I was listening to. Hmm. Right, right. Well, yeah, I mean, I got a wife that thinks I'm still okay. So I don't get too much criticism, unless you call the crap from Hansel, you know, about me being a gaslighter. Cr uh, criticism, I think that's just child's, you know, the childish ramblings on the interweb that we tend to do when we don't get along because you can't just you know take it like a man and just walk off you gotta be better than everybody so hmm. i give you somebody to be better than i'll i'll say shit just to keep you talking <laughs> anyway so <clears throat> hello honey the wife just came home uh whatever you want there you go see how easy that was she's she's a musical genius you might want to get to that r thing too dear <laughs> ah married life in denmark is fine we're still we have still yet to have a poisoned cup of coffee in this house yet neither for me or a guest Oh, yeah, because uh, Vinny set us up again with a, he wanted to do this this with me this week. Tuesday night, he picked the night, he picked the time, and he probably forgot to feed his hamsters, so he had no electricity to get on the internet with. <laughs> well, I don't know, maybe a bear stole his boot. <laughs> uh, what else could have happened to Vinny? Hmm. Abducted by aliens. <laughs> Arrested by the Popo. <laughs> Who knows? The guy's the guy's just uh lately with the radio you'd think he'd if he was gonna be anywhere he'd be on the radio and he doesn't he doesn't seem to show up for me. So <laughs> I'm I'm yeah, but I'm getting a complex because Vinny keeps standing me up on the dark no, table. Okay. If you didn't hear her, my wife is informing me to inform you that Woody is this year's flavor and Vinny is, is last year's flavor. So, right? Did I say that right? You females. Wow. Well, if you're not a Magtow or a woman hater by now, that might set you on the road. Uh, hey, should I do that? And Hey, Woody. You want to do the, the rest of the dark table with me? We could talk about all, whatever's on your fucking mind, Johnny, if you're listening. He might not be listening, though. 
I might be sitting here talking to myself on the RL and M about absolutely nothing. <laughs> Cryptocurrency. 3.5 years and I'm freed. Wow. Brutal $127,000 loan. Well, at the rate of inflation, that's like, what, $180? Quit. It's not even worth typing about, please. Hmm. I think I saw gold down to about 1200 an ounce. Yeah, there it is on the screen, 1193 and 40 Now, when this fucker hits $35 an ounce, I'm buying. <laughs> Until that happens, no, play your inflation games and you're are. Uh, what what else did you call Federal Reserve Bank note collection bureau games? <laughs> I don't have any federal collection reserve notes to get, so th I guess they just have to put me in jail. Wow, can you be put in jail for not having any Federal Reserve Bank notes? <laughs> I suppose it would depend on the circumstances that you were in at the time. Let's see. Oh, I know how to do this better. Uh, Kate says, are you listening, Meister Brow? I, I said Meister. I thought it was the second letter is the one that dictates the I or the E in Nazi lingo. But the fuck do I know? I'm not even German. I don't even want to be German. Not even a little bit. Not even like a corner of my toe. Nothing. Because mm, I like who I be. No, we're we're saying, let's see, we got a delay on the radio. So you guys type and I got Woody on the um Skype. So we could just add him to the existing call. And he too could be on the radio with me. <laughs> but then again, maybe he doesn't want to be. Wait a minute, I heard a da da dong. Oh, well, what's the date today? The 14th of August. Okay, so I catch what's going on in the right day. Um, Just Skype me and I add you right to the call. Or I'll Skype you. If you're there, uh, see this, I got to type in here. Just, hmm. I'm not good at these modern day things. I will tell Mr. Woodman. I will Skype him, and if he says yes, then I will Skype him, and if he says no, then guess what? I will not Skype him. Ah, and then I forgot to write Skype in the thing. Jesus, I can't type and talk at the same time. I must be on marijuana, or tobacco and tea, or probably marijuana. <laughs> We don't we don't know these things. I've been accused of a lot worse though. But anyway, so like I was saying about this, the the confusion part for me sets in when the reality that I was living in was different from the uh, the school and and the society around me were telling me different stuff as I was getting older. You know? So I had a, an English mom and I had an American father, but I never quite really felt like I belonged to the country. You know, it wasn't their property. And then when I did try to become their property, they told me no. They said, hey, take a walk, hippie, go smoke some more of that green stuff and get out of here. Okay, I'm going to add Woody to the call and see how this goes ring let's see one ringy dingy two ringy dingies uh -oh. uh, marijuana marijuana woody that's right you're live on the dork table call the government number one. wants to test me when i pee so tell them they can't tell them that you um you identify as a carrot and it's against your civil rights Okay, what I must do before yeah. we carry on, no, I was Mr. Right. Flash, yeah, 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 I have to shut down the stream I'm listening to you on because of no, the right, delay. Yeah, go do that. You, I didn't expect to, to get you on here, so I'll wait for you. I'll stall with a great story about my upbringing in America. 
I was raised a poor white child. Grew up in the streets of Los Angeles, California. <laughs> ah, whatever. We're all poor. I was born a poor black child. Yeah, old uh, Steve. Anyway, Woody and me have never done this before. So I've heard him on the on his stuff. Now he's, I don't know, I guess you've heard the show before. Have you ever been a dork? I'm a complete dork. Mm. I'm fine have, with that. Have you, now you're participating in the dork table, but have you ever listened to the dork table? Are you familiar oh, yeah. with with the rules and regulations of the dork table? I've heard you guys uh, several times. Yeah, because you guys uh, there's talk no, about all sorts of things. <laughs> yeah, there's no rules on the dork table. There, there's no right or wrong. We just see things the way we see them. Me and Mary. Now, other people that jump in may, may be different. You take a stand, and I'll, I'll give you the mic for a bit. Well, I think we're kind of on the same page in that uh, rules were, I guess they were meant to be broken. Um, I kind of like that uh, freestyle ability in life with uh, no constraints. Um, yeah, I think that... Uh, Alternative media should be just that. Um, you know, obviously, if uh, people are interested, they'll listen in. But if everything was so so much uh, about rules, uh, we'd have the FCC, and we'd uh, we'd certainly narrow the voices. So, Advertising. Yeah. Oh, we'd have Republicans representing Trump looking to buy us out. <laughs> You know, so did uh, they bash Trump uh, over in Denmark like the, the mainstream some, media does here? I don't know, but I don't care for the media, period, no matter where I'm at. I'm just glad I can't read this one. But the people I can understand and, and the folks that I've spoken to, I would say it's about 50-50. Some people are for, it depends on, on their personal knowledge, too, of government, their own government, my government, whatever you want to call that. And the circumstances that we're speaking in, and their education. Yeah, so, there's so many factors there. Yes. Right, but I don't see, I, and I don't see like there's a, a, a level of intelligence that goes to Trump or anything like that. I'm just saying it depends on who you talk to. And I'm not a, a scientist, so I'm just out here talking to average, normal, working class people that have a have a life and get out of the house now and again. Yeah, you know, I'm not doing anything with the uh, academic world, the, p the political world, the financial world. I've abandoned all of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I had a um, as a former customer, they couple of brothers um, worked for their their father's company, had a bunch of semi trucks, and and they they told me under no uh, uncertain circumstances would I not show up at their house a couple of days later and I said, well, is this anything to do with multi-level marketing or Tupperware or something like that? And they, they says, well, we can't tell you, but uh, we, we expect you to be there. And, you know, I respected them as friends and customers and um, literally was walking distance from there. So yeah. I decided that I would go over there and as soon as I get over there, it was uh, ACN, uh, which was uh, like their multi-level marketing <laughs> thing that they had going on. And they they wanted me to pay $500 to join this thing. And then they showed us a video, and it was put on by Trump. And I think I had some preconceived notions about Trump and um, never really liked the guy to begin with. Um, and I just never joined. They kept trying to pressure me into doing this thing, but they never could really tell me if it, things were panning out. They told me it was, but uh, I didn't want, I wasn't going to pay $500 to do anything Trump was involved in. <laughs> so well, I bailed yeah. out on this thing. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't spend 20 to do something Trump was involved in. Yeah. And, and long story short, uh, he gets, he gets elected. I didn't vote for him. Um, there's been some things that uh, I think he's done some, done some good, despite uh, uh, complete media hysteria about him versus the, 
you know, and just keeping things non-biased, the free pass they gave the other side, which was disgusting um, either way you look at it. But just the other day, he, like, signed some legislation to eliminate, um, what was it, something about wildlife and endangered species. I'm like, how can this be good? No, (laughs) it can't be. Well, wasn't it Grimner on the RLM that posted up uh, yesterday that Trump signed the NDAA back in? It's extended again. Yeah, I think now, he's a yes man. <laughs> did I, yeah, well, so do I. I think they all are. I don't think there's anybody that could possibly hold that seat, could make all these great decisions they claim some guy does for four years. Bullshit. No. You don't know enough about one fucking topic to be an expert on 12 topics. You know, let's just be realistic about it. He's got advisors. He does what he's told. He's got a boss. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the way I see politics. And I don't see it any different here. And I like I like the, the lack of uh, physical restraint. Freedom to move around if I choose to. But some weird thing happened when I was here is I got tired of all the traveling and now if I'm an older guy. Now I just like being set in one spot. I know what's going to happen. There's no more excitement and drama. You know, the big thing today was my wife stayed and talked to her sister a little after work. You know, and that's it. So she was a little late from uh, getting home more than usual. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, and I, those I are the po- But those are the kind of problems that I, I prefer to have and. I don't have any of the problems that they have where I'm from. Yeah, as I get older, uh, you know, I think you see a lot of people, they they want to get out and see the world, and there's nothing wrong with that. No, um, no nothing at all. I got out, and I've been to 38 states. Um, I've been to Alaska like 30 times. Uh, <laughs> pretty, pretty vast <laughs> yeah. up there. Yeah. I've been down deep into Mexico, um, but I haven't escaped off to Latin America or Europe, although I definitely want to make one of those big trips to both of those places at some point or another. Maybe I'll escape to Latin America and maybe I'll visit the EU. Yeah. But um, yeah. Well, it's amazing how clean you got to keep your, your appearance on paper just to get a freaking passport to travel now. Yeah, I was going to go down to Mexico because I'm pretty close. I'm like 76 miles away. Mm-hmm. And I I was going to, like, I got some problems going on with my eyes. And I figured, hey, yeah. why not go down like the senior citizens and go get some eye care down in Mexico? With well, the- I read something that might help you. Check this out. In a, see, I'm in an isolated place. It's hard to get stuff. But I read an article that said uh, 20 milligram saffron tablets taken for 90 days 60 to 90 days if you have bad impaired eye vision will will give you a a definite improvement if you take the pill every day for that amount of time i'm more interested in following it up but the source of the information was trustworthy and i would do you know i've had bad eyes my whole life so that's probably the one thing i'd be concerned about is losing my vision (laughs) <laughs> but yeah. surgery and doctors i've been i've been that route with doctors they saved my ass then they got me sick to you know keep me in their business thing and then i finally figured that out kind of on a fluke i heard rumors of it and then i th- found the internet and went wait a minute this stuff is real <laughs> i was a late bloomer getting to the internet huh I, I got yeah. a I got force yeah. fed uh, through my company that I had to get a laptop in 2000. It was uh, Lucky. strongly yeah. urged. Yeah. Well, um, I'm older. I, you know, it it's hard to teach a new dog an old uh, an old dog a new trick. I said that all backwards too, but it's true. You know, you you get kind of hmm. in it, the new language of computer is still to this day just a little uh, intimidating. You know, when I see you eggheads chat on the main feed, <laughs> if you ever notice when you guys are actually talking about something that matters in computer crap, I just back off and <laughs> leave you alone till you figure it out. <laughs> no jokes, no one-liners, I just 
shut up and wait wait until the eggheads figure it out and then we'll go back to joking around well i like the computer it's i mean it can be time consuming it can be a complete waste of time yeah i know i know yes <laughs> but you got to admit that i mean you got to be careful where you get your information from because the internet is full of astroturfing yeah. um mainstream media all of that but you got to admit that if you if you find that right path that right line where you think the truth is that yeah. it can really open things up for you and i bet you experience that with uh even though you're an old dog yeah. and uh, it's tough to learn new tricks, I bet you found a whole new line of research of, of truth. Well, yeah, but what, it, what I'm trying to say is it was difficult to uh, accommodate it because I was taught how to read and write and do these things in a different fashion, a way slower pace than what a computer can do. So it's not so much how intelligent you are to operate a computer, it's if you understand the the equation to get to the answer cuz then you know anybody can repeat something and still not understand it and pass herself off like they know what they're talking about Hi. Hi. i agree I that happens you? that yeah. happens all the time with people just repeating stuff uh um i used to do it before i learned the hard way through my own experience, plus uh, I had outside forces, so to speak, that were, you know, t kind of warning me about what adulthood was really about. And when you're a teenager, you don't really, well, when I was, uh, you, you were doing this earlier too. When, and when I speak, I do it myself. When I was a teenager, I was not a good listener. I was a good avoider. And, I guess now teenagers are all just a bunch of compliant little, you know, robots that do everything they're told. I, that's, I mean, I've always kind of been uh, kind of like a smart ass or resistor, but yeah. you also have to do things your own way. You also have to learn the hard way. Mm -hmm. um, you have to admit it when you're wrong. I mean, I think that's kind of part of the discovery process. And I don't think they're teaching the discovery process of how to, go out and properly discover and find mm. things out for yourself and trial and error and well, find the right. truth. But we're leaving, <laughs> we're leaving this corrupt, fucked up mess to a bunch of children that are afraid to get dirty. Yeah. That in itself, I mean, without even going any further, just that afraid to get dirty. Because I grew up playing in dirt and mud and shit. My mom was always yelling at me, come on, we got to clean you up, you little mess. What are you doing? But at maybe about five or so, I, I started to, okay, you know, and follow that stay clean thing. But until then, I was a little monster getting into everything. Yeah, we used to play in the woods and have mud, mud fights and... Right, and they, they've <laughs> been... rocks. And with their... <laughs> With their advertising on television for bacterial fucking cleaners, they've beaten the normality out of life and made everybody afraid of germs. I'm afraid of germs, Woody. I might catch a cold. Oh, no. And then well, every... The, what? The other thing that I've noticed, and, and, you know, I guess in my day, yeah, I mean, I saw somebody talking about... Uh, Space Invaders was was way better than Tetris, and you know we were talking about our what was it Piss Tetris, <laughs> um, and and to to kind of to qualify that a little bit, that was uh, ice cubes in in the uh, urinals that <laughs> when you go to bars and play pool, uh, the bartenders throws ice in there, and it's just kind of fun uh, knocking down the ice cubes. But anyways, that's the fun that we had growing Strange up with Space hobby. Invaders. <laughs> yeah, uh, but see, and the, that, that's uh, what I mean. I was young once, too, and things have changed so much. And I think society calls it for the better, and I look at it and think, what a bunch of pussies. Yeah. Well, 
the I mean, I don't know if you ever grew up playing like the there's just dots on a screen. It was football, like the Toleco or whatever, the the games where you played football and then you figured out the whole pattern so you could win the game. Oh, um, they, well, I didn't play them, but I knew people that did. I was too busy doing. I don't know. See, all that gaming and stuff. I didn't even get into that until I was a well into being a grown man, 40 something. Well, my point is that somebody told me that I I was just like some some family members that I call them zombies because you talk to them they don't even know that you're there. Um, my and somebody says, well, you were like that as a kid, and I says, I d- I don't know like that. I mean, I used to play that game and and this and that, but it's not like I tuned out the entire world every single day. And what my point is, like I have a a couple of family members that when one of them is playing because they had to split up and give them equal time on the video game, the other kid is watching over the kid's shoulder. So they're both zombies the whole time that you see them. And it's like, I got to the point where it's like, you kids need to go play in the street. (laughs) Right. And see, personally, I blame school and society on that. Parents didn't do that. They were told to do that instructed to do that actually in the end run actually forced into doing it to conform to the society and now after all these fucking years they're they're starting to say well we need to extend the uh play time for the kids at school (laughs) the recess times so now they're going back to the very thing they had when they started to destroy this fucking thing and it's just a another big loop well i just I, I just told you about the, the nine fights with the big chief. And I guess uh, hmm. my point is, in natural law is that we're no different than caribou or reindeer or whatever growing up. To th- They're going to fight. That's part of nature. Yeah, um, yeah. And yeah. now, I mean, kids are no different. Now they got this anti-bullying agenda. Mm-hmm. And these mm-hmm. kids are, they're, they're becoming uh, zombies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're, I... they're sitting on their ass becoming obese. Um, they're, they're not getting out, staying active. And I, and I, yeah, you know, yeah. well, I don't I'm know. still, I'm still active. I'm a few years older than you, I think. And I'm still, I'm still fairly active for a guy my age. I sit around Good. on my ass a lot cause I got a lot of stuff to sit on my ass and do. <laughs> well, good. But, but well, most people 50, 58 don't, you know, they don't walk them. What do I do? A mile or two a day on an average, probably just get it out of the house and go down and get some milk and whatnot for the house and walking something's i've always i've always been fond of everybody else thought i was an idiot you're gonna walk i could give you a ride yeah but then i'll miss my walk <laughs> and they never you want to walk two miles to go sit down and drink and I went, yeah <laughs> i'll meet you up there you'll see i used to think walking was not exercise uh, i used to think uh <laughs> hopping on a Nordic track and uh, lifting weights or whatever was working out. But as I got older, I said, wait a minute, that walking is exercise. And oh, yeah. It's, but, not as, but, it's not as good. For, I mean, there's more you could do. I could – see, I'm saying you like you did earlier. It, we all do that. But there's more I could do, but I'm lazy. And I think I'm keeping myself – you know, my wife would start complaining about it if my health started to show bad. Yeah. She'd say, hey, old man. Do something. <laughs> well, I'm, I I just moved to a new location at this undisclosed uh, location mm. in the desert, and yeah, I, I saw made, the I've, pictures I've, too on mine. So it looked uh, very deserty. Yeah, it's very intriguing. Uh, um, but I have been drinking like a fish because it's so um, hot, mm. and I had to acclimate myself. And Budweiser um, works. <laughs> yeah, well, balance it out with some fucking water because it's. Uh, <laughs> Beer dehydrates you. you know, oh, I've so had many, a couple of gnarly dehydrated yeah, yeah, hangovers that I remember. Are, <laughs> there are so many myths about liquor that aren't true, and people are still just now going, hey, le- weed's legal. <laughs> and they've been lying to you about liquor for the last 80 years. I mean, what the fuck? Wait, wait till the lies start coming out to sell pot, you know? Yeah. They're well, gonna, well they, Flash, uh, I was going to say, let, let me tell you how I was doing a lot of walking. Mm. Um, I, I'd smoke a lot of weed. 
<laughs> and I was like, okay, once you start doing that, uh, or, or have a couple of beers or even one, I mean, I won't drink and drive at all. Good. And, oh, and it was heart. like, I'm not going to, so I was like, I was like, fine. I gotta, I'd go get up and go for a walk and I'd walk miles, just go getting baked. And I was like, so this is positive. <laughs> Well, it, again, it depends on the person. You know, a punishment to some is a blessing to another. Yeah. You know, like if the car breaks down and somebody had to go get gas, I'd be, hey, I'll go get gas. <laughs> yeah. What? Are you sure? It's three in the morning. <laughs> now nah, I'll yeah. go get it. Where? Which Point me in a direction. I'll go do it. And uh, But try to get me to do the dishes. And Hey, I'm in the middle of a game. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Well. We're all human, you know, and what like, I just said this five seconds, what gets me just turns you go, hey, fuck that. I ain't doing it. Mm. Mm. I call it human nature. And part of the thing I think of living in in this Danish thing is it's so small. I get to see how things operate from a, a better vantage point. You know, like it's the difference between going into a 7-Eleven and going into a Walmart. You know, you can go into the 7-Eleven and see everything in that store inside of a 20 minutes. Boom. You've shopped. It's finished. But you go to Walmart, three days later, they find you in the girls' clothing, sleeping, you know, with a case of beer. <laughs> yeah, I, I walked into Walmart. I had no idea where anything was, but the first thing I do is ask somebody, where, where is this stuff? Because there's no way I'd ever find it on my own. Cirque has never been to a store that big in America. Now, I don't know. She might have been to something that big in Europe. I've never really considered. She says no. I've never really thought of asking her. It didn't strike me. But when the uh, Walmart pictures were real big on the YouTube, crazy people dressed up like animals and half-dressed and showing their parts in the, you know, in the uh, aisles and whatnot, it was more the size of the store that got her than what the people were doing. Oh, the people of Walmart? Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> she's Danish, right? I mean, Danes are, they're not, they're not as restrict. Their thinking is not as restricted as they're growing up as ours is. You know, all the uh, censorship on like regular television I grew up with. Didn't you grow up with it? I, how old, how old a man are you, Woody? I'm I'm 50 on the button. Oh, okay, so you grew up in, in the um, in the 70s and the 80s. So yeah, we it's... we had three channels like a well four. We had ABC. Like I'm back to days where we had rabbit ears and you got up yeah. off your ass and you changed the the channel. We had mm. ABC, NBC, yeah. CBS, and then like the channel 11 that played the reruns. Okay, well, I lived in L.A., and they had a few more in individual channels, but it was all the same bullshit all the time. And I remember when I was a little kid watching it, thinking the same damn thing that I thought, you know, that I think now I thought to some degree at the time. And I always had my dad lit over my shoulder m mumbling something, you know, um, regarding something adult that he wanted me to hear, but he, he didn't want everybody to know he was talking to me. Like the night of the moon landing. This is probably the core of why I don't believe it ever happened. Is my father was sitting there grumbling, oh, that's all bullshit. And I thought, wait a minute, why would he be, you know, because if he had something to say, he wasn't a shy fella, he'd just come say it. But my little brother and my mom were there, so I think he was just trying to get a message to me without raising suspicion. But he raised one kid that doesn't believe anything the system says. And then he raised another kid that believes everything the system says. I've had people question my belief system and I don't care what conspiracy theory that it is. They, yeah. they don't want to look at reality. But the thing about the moon is like all the pictures that they have with the, the angles of the sun is the shadows aren't right. And I'm like, how could, they, how could you look at that and not question I, well, right. To us, it's no, see our normal is the fringe. To the the masses, the masses have just been convinced of the most unbelievable crap, and and it doesn't matter where you begin with unbelievable crap. 
But the failures that they do have, Federal Reserve Bank, Rockefeller Medicine, are always shoved aside because we went to the moon. We, we're out in space. We, we have satellites. Everything, but what do we have here? You know, what, what have we got in the life that we're living? Second-rate electricity, hello cakes. Second-rate, you name it. The food supply is poison. The water supply is poison. The education system is a complete fantasy. Religion is completely out of pocket doing all kinds of crazy shit with governments and And, children well (laughs) you know they want to make this all sound new but i got to tell you something about that whole pedophile thing this has been going on since people figured out how to fuck creepy uh, you are right but it's it's a like champagne and caviar it's a it's a taste Something that you're taught. I don't think there's millions of people all over the world that wake up one day and go, Hey, I feel like fucking me a little kid. Let's see, where can I get one? (laughs) I, I, You know, you just... You see, there I go, you. I just don't wake up in the mornings with these weird ideas to go do these completely unnatural acts on other people. Yeah, but I think it comes down to um, they don't... They'd rather question your belief system than questioning their authority. I don't care if it's the church or the government or mm. corporate America. Yeah. Like yeah, I, yeah. I had somebody said cheaper's yeah. better. Like my grandma, before she passed away, we we're, we're like, we're talking about Walmart and she was like w- Walmart and, and cheaper is better. And I'm like, no, there's significant problems that come with cheap, cheap. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I have some other people say, well, Walmart's successful, um, mm-hmm. as if, like, maybe I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm no, like, know, well, no. you know, no. cheaper is not better. Um, you know, the, look look what it's done to society when you get these big box stores versus, you know, the maws and paws and, and things like that, where there actually was a, an element of service instead of somebody running around in a blue vest. I mean, um, yeah. pointing at things while they're looking at a phone. Yeah, I just don't see how cheap, cheap is good when it takes things out. And um, I don't know. I think it's. Uh, I guess it comes down to your belief system. And yeah, it's a state of mind. I agree with that. But we're, again, we're going to be the minority. And most people believe differently because they know better. And I don't say I know better. I just say that I know what works for me. Yeah, what, you gave, what, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, mean what, no, no, no. Well, what works for me, it, it's not a, a black and white kind of thing. It's got different ways to look at it. And you kind of represent what I did just in a, a different way. Same, same action. Same results, but the road was your own fucking road. Yeah, I've learned the hard way um, in many regards. Uh, in in many ways, I would have taken a different path with what I know now. <laughs> but um, you have to figure that out on your own. You can't do what, what other people want or expect because you will go down the wrong path. Um, right, but it's not clear. To, all right, most people don't see that as the wrong path until it's too late to undo all the shit they did. You know, the good intention folks, they mean well. They just don't have any idea that what they're doing is fucking wrong. Yeah, that, people buy at Walmart and they think it's a good thing. And I've I've been buying here because it's cheap. <laughs> I figure, you know, if they embrace it so much and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, they want it so bad. Uh, yeah, I'll go buy a few things when I stock up on some staples. But long run, it's not good. You've been left without a choice, though, as far as purchasing power goes. Yeah, I'm you know, going to, yeah. You th- I don't, it's like me and Mary had an argument about, I don't know who it was, uh, Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton, remember when he was doing all that cocaine in the 90s and the newspapers were covering it up, telling we he was eating too many McDonald's cheeseburgers and had a stroke. <laughs> And I was trying to tell Mary that that man wouldn't know what a McDonald's cheeseburger tastes like. He's never even probably touched one in his life. Why would a millionaire limousine baby eat McDonald's cheeseburgers? They're terrible. Yeah, I doubt he'd even eat Tyson chicken. Well, but the point is, 
a millionaire limousine baby's going to all of a sudden when he's in the White House get a taste for crap food? No, it was just a bad lie to cover up the heart attacks he was having from doing all that coke. Yeah, I I would probably believe he was womanizing and partying. Uh, I don't know too much more about that, but I would agree that, you know, if you're going to be the, you know, the statist elitist uh, <laughs> president, that you're going to yeah. be having the surf and turf every single night. Well, you're a health you're a healthy guy, right? Fa- basically, uh, you know, you, I, you remember I, Jack Jack Lalane? Yeah. Okay. Do you see what Jack Lalane looked like when he died in his nineties? Yeah, he was still swimming and pulling boats. Right. Have you seen what Bill Clinton looks like today? Yeah, that he. Man, uh, that man looks like he was riding in one of his planes and jumped out of it. <laughs> he looks like some people I went to high school with that never it's, gave up blow. Right. It's yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. And these are the legacies of of the White House. What they leave us with year after fucking year after fucking year. You look back 20 or 30, 40 years, and you go, hey, that guy, that president, he was bopping everything he could get his paws on. Then you look at the next president, and, hey, he killed the last president, and now he wants to go steal everything that uh, Vietnam's got. (laughs) And it goes to Nixon and on and on and on. And look at where we are now. Nobody learned a fucking thing. Nothing. People think oh. that they gotta they gotta pick the winning horse. Uh, this okay. guy's better yeah. than that. Uh. Well, I got a, I got a thing <laughs> I want I want to get your opinion on. I read a little bit about uh, Trump. I got to get my name straight because I fuck things up really bad on the radio. Trying to remember the right name is my weakness. Get the right idea with the wrong name. But Trump wants to back the U.S. dollar on a gold standard. But the requirements, it was like 12,000 requirements that need to be fulfilled that's got to go through Congress and this, that, and the other. It'd take about 12, 13 years to do it. (laughs) Okay, I'm being a little sarcastic, but what do you know about that? What do you have an opinion about it on? You know, I've heard Ron Paul talk about we need to go back to the gold standard. Um, the problem with gold is that it can be concentrated into the, the, the rich and powerful just like money. Um, it's a, it may or may not be a scarce resource. Uh, there is something to be said like up in Canada or British Columbia, Canada, that they have found through core samples a lot of gold to the point that if they exploit that gold, that could really bring the price down. But um, the problem with gold is he who has the most money can gobble that up and it can mm. be a manipulated uh, mm. commodity item, in this case money or a gold-backed standard, to, to the point that uh, I would probably say that I'm not in full agreement with Ron Paul, although... I agree with uh, an alternative to the money supply and having a standard versus just a Federal Reserve system where there's no auditing or even proof that there's <laughs> gold in the reserves. <laughs> it's a so, beautiful game. <laughs> I mean, the other thing is like you look at the, the either the gold or silver ETFs. Um, Wait, what's an ETF? Give me a minute. Exchange Traded Fund. Okay, all right. So you say you have a warehouse of gold and they issue you a certificate that you should be able to go out and claim your gold whenever you want. So you're really dealing with paper or an exchange traded versus physically holding it. So always. So because it, it doesn't make sense to hold your own gold. It's well, just, yeah, and that's why they have these big warehouses or issue the yeah, right. exchange-traded funds. So yeah. who's to say that they're not issuing more paper <laughs> than what's actually in? I mean, it's, it <laughs> yeah. goes down to what the Medici's yeah. did or what brought on the French Revolution. Um, so things can be manipulated through the gold standard, I guess is what I'm saying. So... 
why would you trust a system unless you have proof? Like, why do people believe the Wizard of Oz of the Federal Reserve and that they actually have gold that's backing our system when they don't have any proof or even a formal audit? And even if they did have an audit, what proof is there that the audit is true? Um, would you like an answer? Yeah. I got let's an answer your, for that. Yeah, let's let's hear it. You're not going to like it. Are you are you sitting down, Woody? <laughs> I'm slamming coffee. Yes. This is probably going to get a lot of people shutting the radio program off. I think it's because they don't know any better. Well, I mean, that's a pretty simple answer, but I think that yeah, that's probably true. They don't because want to know any better either. They're, they're blind to it, do not want to hear it, will not pursue an answer. No, the government wouldn't fuck me. You're full of shit. End of story. Well, and that's the whole reason I brought up the Wizard of Oz. It's like people, they don't want to believe what's on the other side of the curtain. They don't want to see it's just a little man talking out of a loudspeaker. It's easier just to believe that that's a total fucking godhead authority. Maybe it's got something to do with the indoctrinations that we go through. Some people, you know, fight it and some people don't. There's an equal amount of people on RLM that are both for and again what we're doing but the weird part is is that the resistance is never heard you know the well, loud the, the loudest voice yelling is always the one forcing us as people to do a bunch of shit that's really bad for us but lying about it all the way to the bank yeah and that doesn't mean that i believe everything that I hear or every alternative media or every conspiracy theory. But um, that's why I will listen to it and think that, hey, alternatives are good. Um, alternative media, uh, alternatives like Ron Paul and libertarianism. It doesn't mean that I'm going to agree with everything of the gold standard, but I would probably say an alternative is going to be better than than somebody else's standard or okay. but do you really see a gold standard coming in your your financial lifetime to reset this nightmare and fix it i don't i think it's just more bullshit to keep the thing rolling down the road as long as they can do it i'd like to think i'm an economist and the thing about the silver and gold markets right now mm -hmm. it's completely manipulated that the the economist can't I mean, what's the point of having an economist when it's just completely manipulated um the price just show? keeps coming down I, I keep seeing it. it's taking yeah. a shit yeah for like I the last seen, i haven't seen anything get pounded like this <laughs> since i was like 12 years old this is horrible jimmy is just pounding this kid you know and it's the same thing they, they won't let it they won't even stop him they're just leaving him to pummel him, you know? Well, I, I think it's because people see it as a good alternative, like safe, to... safe haven. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Safe it's haven. like they don't want people to go to safe haven because if you go to safe haven, we're going to fuck you over <laughs> like, mm. like we're seeing right now. And we're going to take you down 4% a day or we're yeah. going to take you down 14% from where your buy-in was at. Um, that makes people get, get a little spooky really fast. Well, I read something today. <clears throat> excuse me, that's off the topic in a sense, but it's not. The The dock drivers that pick up freight, I forget which port it was in particular, but the drivers have a GPS on their truck, whether they're, they're licensed to carry anybody's load, but they can't do it without this GPS shit, so they're stuck to these employers against their will. If they want to work, you do it this way or you don't work. And they're independent drivers. So now that apparently the laws have made it so the independent driver can't work unless he joins a group. That's kind of like uh, they're forcing, like, you know, let, let me back up yeah, a little it's bit. A, yeah, it's a slow cook. They're doing it every, that's what I mean, Woody. They're doing a little here, a little there, and in 20 years it'll be normal and everybody will be forced to do it because everybody else is doing it. Well, let me make my point here. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. They, they, all these feminazis and 
You get Ooh. these male feminists and everybody, oh, it's a woman's right to decide it's her body. Yeah. Yet you get a nurse that doesn't want to get a um, an immunization shot. And you don't see these people coming out of the woodwork saying it's her body. She shouldn't have to get a immunization shot because you're requiring it at her hospital. Yeah. They're just getting stupid on this issue over here. Yet when it really comes down to that or marijuana or whatever, they're saying you have to have your immunization shot because of herd mentality. Um, yeah. And then, and then they won't let that nurse work at that hospital anymore. Right. Because she didn't get her shot. Mob or rule. if she didn't t- test positive uh, against THC, she can't work at the hospital. So I'd like to call out right now the double standard of that whole, uh, it's, it's her body. But Woody, you can't create a system that doesn't breed corruption. It doesn't, it's not possible. They, they are, they're all doomed to fail in the end. And they, they just get chipped away in the, you know, along the road, and people just keep using them. And the, you can see you're dragging a bloody carcass down the road, but you won't stop because that's what you have to do. And then there's a few of us, like I consider you pretty ballsy for picking up in 2018 here and, and moving to a new place and starting over. Because it's hard, especially when you're our age. Or maybe we've been lied to all our lives. And it's not hard for anybody. They just The stories are blah, blah, blah. And you believe the stories you hear. Well, I don't like the stories I hear, so I go make my own. Well, I want to start over. Uh, yeah, I saw yeah, the trends. Fuck, this is a dork table. You can talk about your, the color of your pubic hair if it makes you feel good. It's, it's kind of blackish brown, I think. I had a feeling you'd want to bring it up, so I'd beat you to it. <laughs> you know, I saw on my kitchen okay. table the other day, I go, is that a pubic hair or is that a chest hair? And I'd like to think, well, nobody's going to eat here anyways right now, so I think wow. it was a chest hair. <laughs> yeah, let's call it that, just for the sake of argument. Yeah, I, I think, I'm pretty sure it was just a chest hair. Um, well, luck, lucky you. <laughs> So that's the extra that's protein will help you run in. <laughs> Needless to say, I threw it out the door. Ah, and poor animals. You probably poisoned yeah. a snake or something. <laughs> I, I try cleaning. I, I try to keep it clean in here, man. What can I say? No, Especially I, when you see potentially. I could, <laughs> no, I could tell by the outside of what I saw in the mines on the shots you had on there. If you take that good care of the outside, the inside's usually nicer. Well, you know, you got to keep it clean because I take a lot of trips in and out just in moving and just the sand alone yeah, uh, yeah, on the yeah, floor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said, Did I said, I, I got to, I got to mop. I got to do the dishes. It's, it's easier to stay on top of the problems and let it go. And that's kind of where I'm at. But do what people do in cold countries. They build a, a little like a, a room before you get into the house so you can do your, your shoes and your coats and shit without fucking up the whole house. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of a little extra work, but you know, the size of of a double closet would probably suit you, so you could get in out of the elements and clean up to go inside. Well, I would have to lay it down properly. I've thought about that. Um, yeah, yeah. The problem is, like snakes and scorpions. Uh, um, at least I can see with the daylight what's outside the door when I <laughs> open it up. <laughs> well, but anyways. Well, you can always get creative. Anyway, the point I was trying to make, and, and I'll, I'll say it with this too. I used to buy used cars and sell them and buy them when I was young because I'd get tired of a car or whatever and get, just, ah, get rid of it now. And uh, one of the, the things I noticed when I was doing that is the worse the license plate of the car was, the worse the car drove. The better shape the license plate was in, the better chance you had that it was going to run pretty good. What about not having a license plate on the front? <laughs> Which they oh, Christ. Of. I started driving before all that shit changed, so I don't know. I don't really remember. God, I was 16. I was 16 when I first got legal, but I was driving before that. Yeah. And, yeah, well, I was a good driver. Even my, my father used to throw me the keys to one of his cars. When I go, I want to go to Whittier. I was like 15 and a half. He says, well, you're going to screw yourself up before you get your license, bud. If that's what you want to do, it's on you. And he'd throw me the keys, which meant 
I trust you, so don't be stupid and do something ignorant out there and get caught. Yeah. Mm. And it was before all that insurance and uh, the harshness of stealing cars. So if he said, yeah, hey, the kid took the car, they would have probably just, you know, slapped me on the back of the hand in those days. And we catch you again, you're going to jail. You know, yeah. not what they do now. Probably, I don't even know what they do now. I haven't been messed with by the cops, and I can't count the years since 98, I think. Well, let me go back a little bit. Yeah. Let me go back here. I, I, I had made up my mind that I was going to move down here. In fact, I had already gave the landlord the, the, the deposit and all that good stuff, and mm-hmm. I was planning on leaving. But for my own survival, I just saw the trends of Seattle, the cost of living going up. I got some uh, medical issues, um, and the cost of that skyrocketed. I says, there's no point of sticking around in, a, in an area where people willingly accept the cost of living going up, and you hear everybody whining uh, from a, <laughs> the liberal agenda, um, and, and it's all amounting to tax and fraud, and it's causing my cost of living going up to the point that I'm not playing into that stupidity anymore because... I think the overwhelming majority in the collective good have their heads up their asses up there. So I decided to cut and run. And I figured for my own survival, I'm going to go find some dry heat. I'm going to go where it's warmer and the cost of livings are much lower. Because if the Mm. cost of living went up, given the demographics around here in Tucson, Arizona, uh, the, the overwhelming majority would revolt because they couldn't afford that. There's just not that that opportunity down here to drive up the cost of living. So I think right, they almost right. keep it lower. But <laughs> while I decided to leave, I had somebody tell me, you know, you need to get out and uh, enjoy the rain. Somebody told me, you're going to, you're going to miss. Cause I came down here in April and I went to um, a rock and gym meetup and somebody says, you're going to miss that rain up in Seattle. You know, in my eyes, I've seen enough of it in 50 years and I go, but I, I said, you know what? There's something to that. I will probably miss the rain. So I went to go get oh, baked. Yeah. I went yeah. to go get totally baked. And uh, on the way, my two-mile walk, <laughs> I, I found a, 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 a lawn chair, a camping chair at a park. Nobody was around. I said, I'm, I'm taking the lawn chair. <laughs> <laughs> you you bandito <laughs> so i took the lawn oh, chair no. and i went for a walk down into the the woods and it yeah. started raining and i was uh i was literally smoking some granddaddy purple out there okay mm. and so i'm sitting out there when I, I had to walk across the trail hop over a fence and i saw somebody way down the trail but I, it's like i don't really care it's like I'm I'm not bothering anybody over here, and I went and kicked back in this lawn chair, and uh, it started raining, and I started enjoying it. I remember I was thinking this guy said you're gonna miss that rain, so I'm just kind of partaking, and yeah, I come yeah. back over the fence, and here's this cop uh, standing there. He's going, so what were you doing back there, smoking a little pot? <laughs> and I'm like. You know, figured I'm minding my own business. Uh, I says I didn't do anything wrong. I'm I'm going this way. He he starts going for his taser, um, because I start walking wow. the direction I was going, um, and I'm like, uh, I'm going <laughs> that way, and I'm not I'm not admitting anything. I don't. Did you have the chair with you when you did it? Say what? Did you still have the chair? Fuck yeah, I had the chair with me. <laughs> so you're walking around in the middle of the nowhere. Yeah, I mean, chair. it's not like I found a, a kid's the cop bike. Stopped. Right, this right. Is a, this is a lawn chair that I found. It's not like I stole this chair. No, but this is how desperate the police are, in yeah, my he... opinion, to avoid crime. They don't want to get shot at work. They want to do easy crap. Yeah, but I'm just trying to mind my own business and go home. <laughs> and he's trying to get me to admit that I was smoking pot. And I'm like, I know, and I know that if I would have admitted that I was smoking pot, he would have arrested me for smoking pot in public. So, you know, it's like, uh, I, I'm just going that way. And that was the path that I was go- going to. And he starts backing up, freaking out, going for his uh, taser. And I like, uh, I, so I set the chair down. I said, okay, what's up? You know? mm-hmm. And so he uh, wow. he wanted to know my my name uh, <laughs> and all this stuff. I says, okay, I'll give you my name uh, to set him at ease a little bit. Let him. So he did. Yeah. They did run it. Yeah. Um, but I, I I says, okay, now that I gave that to you, I'm gonna go about my merry way. 
Because it's either he's going to detain me and arrest me, or I'm going to my merry way. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I start no, I walking understand. back with my lawn chair, and uh, walk, I had to walk by three cop cars that by then had pulled up. And I'm like walking right by all three of these guys like, I didn't do nothing wrong. I got this green lawn chair. In fact, my fat ass busted out the 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 thing fell apart on me the other day i got to figure out how to dis- properly dispose of this chair that no longer works but i was like well, wh- what did i do wrong i'm going out here in the in nature you did, well you didn't wear um wellies and you didn't have a, a bathrobe on then they would have probably just ignored you <laughs> yeah. if you walk around town in a bathrobe and wellies dragging a chair i don't think the cops will even want to talk to you <laughs> Yeah, just pretend I'm homeless, and he's like, <laughs> "You don't want to touch him. He's a Tweakerville guy." <laughs> is all that so? Is is all the things, the horrible crap I've been reading about the states true over the last seven years? I I know I asked that a couple times, but man, it's just it's so hard to accept that it's gone from as bad as it was to the way I'm hearing it explained now. And let me take a comment here. I want to make a commercial announcement for people that have rattlesnake infestation. So what I did was I Googled what repels rattlesnakes. And I found something interesting. You want to hear it? Yes. I can't say this word right, but I'm going to try it. It says use of nepfotholene flakes or mothballs. I could say that one are not effective at repelling snakes. However, they can repel insects and small rodents who do attract rattlesnakes. And I just thought, you know, interesting little tidbit. You never know what help is going to be, you know. That's why I want to get rid of the pack rat that's that's showing up around here. Well, what exactly is, is a pack rat? I'm, I'm a city boy, so I'm not haven't been in the desert in a long time what's a pack rat define it well pack rats you know what a rat is the, oh yeah rat they're they're kind of like that but they're like big and round and they're they they're, they take things with them they pack things with them and then they, they they're like hoarders they got like this oh. hoarding syndrome okay so they'll well, they'll take things like i thought they took my coffee mug this morning yeah i heard all that mister i found it in my uh I found it in my, what you call it? Microwave. It, yeah, micro. Oh, I spelled it wrong. That would help <laughs> to spell things right. But I was reading and talking at the same time. I shouldn't do both. It's dangerous. Okay, I spelled pack rat. Let's see what the computer brings. Because I like little uh, quests, you know. I'm one of those, um, what do you call it, task-oriented kind of people. You know, I like to do something that has a start and an end not a continuous over and over kind of thing, but something that could be different every time you do it. Well, number one, I don't want pack rats around because they I don't want them eating my shit. I don't want them going up under my engine of my diesel truck. Oh, yeah. Truck, and right, I don't right, want right. them chewing on my wires. <laughs> well, and I've also, over the last couple of years with the Internet, have trying to go as much natural in everything I do as possible, you know? Yeah, I've taken well, it to an extreme most people wouldn't even be able to do, but it suits my life, you know. I haven't but been here, effective at at putting out uh like peanut butter on the uh the mouse traps. Mm-hmm. They've gotten it all. The other the other problem is the traps were going off like during the day because it turned to like the peanut butter to oil, so it just went off. <laughs> so I wasn't very effective with my fishing methods. So I decided, you know what, I gotta I gotta go out and get some bait and just kill them. Because you're yeah. right, I, I don't yeah. want to have, I don't want to have pack rats coming around and then no. um, the snakes smell them and they're coming around looking for food. So I says I got to get rid of this problem because I. Right. Well, know. if you figure out what the source of their food is, then you go for that. You know, it's kind of like the Jew thing. You know, the Jews hide behind everybody else while you get wiped off the planet, and somebody else did it. it wasn't us. <laughs> they just paid for it all. You know. It's all self-defense, though, isn't it? In a rat's asshole, self-defense. <laughs> are you pro? Are you pro Israel? <clears throat> um, We're going to differ on this one. If you are, I hope it, you don't take it too personal and get mad at me. I would probably say like uh, people are people. Um, 
that no but got, are you pro israel do you have a stand on it for it again it do you know how deep it rooted it is in your homeland in my homeland in everybody's homeland well, I happen to know quite a bit about Middle Eastern politics, mm-hmm. and no, yeah. mm-hmm. I would that have to of- say that uh, um, this is extreme right-wing authoritarianism, mm-hmm. that they rely on the propaganda machine often for an agenda, and I would probably say that for those that you know proclaim that they want you know equality, that they mm-hmm. go about it in a in a manner that is completely racist, um, and I would probably say any government that uses the institution of government to advance their racist agenda, yeah. um, and, and which is against humanitarian rights, yet mm-hmm. they're going to claim that that it's all self defense is yeah. probably not a government that should uh, have any business in my government. Right, yeah, because most of the destruction doesn't happen in what they're defending. It happens in what they're stealing. Well, it's it's an apartheid government, and um, they're stealing. All right, but the Jews are heavily embedded in the American government. A lot of the American government has dual citizenship. Now, why would you want to be loyal to two entities? Then yeah, where's take- your loyalty at? I, yeah, take Rahm Emanuel. Well, where is his loyalty? I don't know. I'm not real big on Chicago. You know, I lived in a military town the last I did spend time in the States was in North Carolina to top it off. But the politics there was so minimal because these guys were going off to fight. So there was a lot of drinking and playing and pool and anything but talking about that shit. Well, take a look at Nikki Haley at the UN. Where's her I loyalty? Know. I don't. I don't know. I've been away since 2011. So, UN. I just blocked all that shit out when I was in the states, and I haven't acquired an interest in it since I left. Well, that could be good and bad. Um, the UN is just the failed League of Nations from Woodrow Wilson in what 1917 or sometime like that. If you're a history buff and you need the dates, I'll correct Google it, but. It failed the first time around, so they retitled it and made it worse. Yeah, but, but while you're away and ignoring it, the problem has mm-hmm. gotten worse. So at what point do you – it's kind of like if I ignored these rats and just let them chew shit up. Mm-hmm. Is that good? Yeah, but – all right. <laughs> See, society – okay, but society isn't against you doing that. Society is against me not recognizing a corporate entity as my master. If I don't bow to the fucking altar of the USA, I'm some kind of a foreign agent that's against them. Yeah, you know, but if you I, if you don't agree with the uh, um, Israel as our ally, yeah, and you accept no, white yeah. phosphorus bombs going off on people and spraying yeah. down people with raw sewage, um, somehow you're 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 not with our ally, or you're not a good American. Right, and I think okay, and I think a lot of the the acceptance comes from TV and movies that we watched when we were growing up. You know, the indoctrination has been it, it's been subtle and aggressive both at the same time. So, if you saw the aggressive and you didn't want it, they get you with the subtle. You know what it I was, think it is, Flash. No, it, I, no, we're talking about it. It's my opinion. Mm. Well. The thing, the thing that I see, it's like if you don't go along with the the, the official version of nine eleven, mm-hmm. or if you don't go along with the the indoctrination, if you say anything critical about Israel, you get branded as an anti semite, and then you get the the SPLC and these kind yeah. of hate groups out there yeah. badgering it's all, people. It, it's all nonsense. It's all based on lies. Yeah, they, they, if you say anything critical about Israel, there's something yeah, I, wrong. I, I'm aware, and I'm Jewish, and I'm telling you, it's funny <laughs> as hell. Over the years, well, since I married Cirque, right, I've got to live somewhere where I don't have a lot of people trying to convince me of anything. Because the conversations that I've had up until the last couple of weeks have just been, hi, how are you? You know, Can I have two of those? 
And now I'm I'm been going to the local bar. Well, one of them. They got a few bars now, but the one I like, just like the the feel of, and the people in there will talk to me about any topic. Doesn't matter. And I don't remember that being that comfortable when I was in the states. You know, the argument level was always, if you're going to talk about this, you're going to end up in a fight. Well, I talked about that same topic over here and no fight. Disagreement. Oh, okay. You don't see, you don't get it. Now, I can take somebody looking down at me and and figuring, well, you don't have the right education because I understand that particular side of it. I could have gone down that road, but chose not to. And by doing that, it left more doors open for me to use And other people don't understand how I see things, so they can't really understand what I'm saying all the time. I know what I'm saying, but expressing it for the, you know, the 20 or the 30 people that pick up the dork table, who knows? Maybe they're just having a good laugh at some of the crazy stories or uh, some of the crap we read, like we've read jokes on here, or me and Mary just went nuts. Like... When I decided that the world is run by boobs, even Miss Mary saw the logic in my madness. I I felt special. (laughs) Hey, who doesn't like tits? Exactly. That's the the whole point. You know, I tried to tell Mary back then. I said, you know, if if you're in an argument with your wife and your wife just showed your boobs... I bet you wouldn't fight anymore. <laughs> that would shut you right the fuck up, especially at Seven <laughs> Eleven. But I like that, that analogy. That was a joke, Zerk. It's Seven Eleven part. It's easier to get in. A, it's easier to get in an argument with people, and I think that I think it's learned behavior from all these yeah. stupid talking heads on CNN and yeah. Fox News. Yeah. So you get all I, these repeaters yeah. that they. Well, if you start talking politics or religion. This is where the people come out, and and you get all these people that talk coexist and tolerance. No, they're not. They're the least tolerant. They're the least people that want coexistence. And it's funny you say that because I have not heard that line come up out of these people. But what I have heard on out of them uh, is Denmark is basically an atheist country. Said so the church, yeah, but not a lot of people use it. Now this woman lives in this town her whole life so i'm pretty sure she knows what she's talking about and didn't really strike me i don't know either in a positive or a negative because in a in a sense you're still choosing a side (laughs) there's no way out of choosing sides in some things you got to it's just the way the balance of life is and in government they've seemed to have a work that idea against us and give us the illusion of, of a choice we don't really have. Yeah. Hey Flash. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a quick break. I gotta shut off my Whoa. coffee pot that I that's got you... no coffee in it and I'll be oh, right shit. back at you. No fires. Ah that's talk right. about tips will... and seven eleven some more and I'll be I, right back. I was gonna go on about this rat repellent natural home remedy recipes for rodent deterrent. I mean how it everybody's got rats. Rats have been around longer than we have. They'll probably be here after we're gone. But according to this, I'll just read from it until Woody gets back. It says, ammonia, peppermint, cat urine, human hair. Mix them all together in a paste. Why are you going to get the cat to pee in the... Well, never mind. (laughs) I know you want an easy solution to your rat problem and a cheap one too. That's natural. Always look for the simplest solution first. But the truth is that it's not so easy to keep rats away. However, it can be done and permanently. And it goes on. Hey, Woody. Hey. I heard you sit down. But uh, I don't. See, this dork table thing, I get uh, distracted, sidetracked, the dog barks, traffic's too loud, something, and I get forget what's going on. So I have no clue what we were yakking about before you got up to go turn off your exploding coffee pot. Um, we were talking about coexistence and um, oh yeah yeah tolerance. Got it. Okay yeah okay and got it. I I kind of like to say when I moved down here I I was offline for damn near a month, so I'd have uh, to go down to the library just kind of see what was going I on. I remember the, yeah. the digital world. We were all rooting for you. 
And there was a guy, um, because there were like a bunch of people were getting people to sign initiatives out in front of the the public library. (laughs) And I met a guy because I was uh, rambling on about, you know, they they were going through the the initiative process and the the political process, which is, you know, a joke, um, even though I'm kind of an outsider down here. But I, I think I've studied enough about Arizona and politics that it's it's a it's a failure of a two party side, maybe just the opposite of more Republican than where I came from. Um, yeah, yeah. But probably. but my my point is, um, I was bringing up alternatives and alternative currency, alternative media, and and just uh, alternatives in general to this guy that was trying to get me to. In fact, I signed his initiative because I agreed to it. Um, it. It was to lower taxes, is what it was. I was like, well, that's who couldn't agree with that. But I ended Me, up. Um, I don't agree with it. Okay, well that's that's fine. That you're. I I don't agree with signing up to pay taxes to a government f- in the first place. Well, that's Un- unless no. Well, I'm, I'm well. Hold on, because I know that sounds harsh to you, but unless I had my own private business, I didn't feel responsible for taxes working for other people. Nah. But in this Nobody. case, the lower taxes, I was like, yeah, I'm kind of for that. <laughs> and then what do you do? Okay, so then you lower the taxes, then where does the money come to to replace what you just took away? You know, that's an, it's all corrupt. These well, people I, are milking us like cats. Man. That's what I it's say. They, they need to take money out of the education budget because they just want more. And you need to, to tell them that they can take... Uh, their own money and volunteer, and, and I, I brought this up with a legislative aid already, um, that, they, yeah. that they need to educate people that they can pay more uh-huh. rather than, because I was calling for a full tax credit for homeschooling, full tax credit for those that, uh, that are in, have their kids in private school, or a full tax credit for those that don't even have kids. And they're like, well, where would the money come from? And I'm like, well, why don't you tell people and educate them through the process that they can pay more? If they so desire, if they equate more money for education as being more quality government, they said, believe me, the school takes the money on an annual basis and sends it out with the kids that they and tell people that they can take their, their, their refund that they get and pay that towards forward to the school. So I guess they, they always want more <laughs> to the well, point yeah. they say you can volunteer more, but they still want taxes from everybody. <laughs> Okay, and, and you do understand that we're we're me and you are living on promissory notes, credit. We've never had money to exchange. We've always just had promissory notes that we're going to pay it. Well, yes, and even down to, um, I watched a, a video of the former Secretary of State down here. Um, I guess he's now running for governor. He, he, it was the on YouTube. It's the Kleenox, Kleenex box speech. And what he brought up was the budgetary politics of Arizona and like all the, the deficit spending they ran into because they forecast where things were going to be in 2008. And then it got worse in 2009 and how they were like spending way more money than what they had. And yet it came down to the federal stimulus money that they would give them this money if they, but the string was they had to keep their spending up equal to where it was at (laughs) from 2006. (laughs) So all these Republicans, which is republicly led down here and the Democrats were voting to spend more money than they had causing huge deficits because they wanted that federal stimulus money. Right. So they had to plus, keep their spending plus, up huge. Right. Plus and then we all, all the, <laughs> Right. But plus, on top of the debt, there's the interest on the debt, on every note printed. That's my point, is that they had to keep the spending up, yet every dollar that they printed, that they were giving out because it was all credit or debt, we're losing right. value of our money, and we're paying interest right. on it. All, and, this, and this in this in this fraudulent corrupt system that we all play in it has the rules are set so that the rate of interest goes up as a penalty for not paying the interest that you didn't already have so you're borrowing more money to pay <laughs> well 
Well, it's, and I, it's worse than being a heroin addict. I'd rather be shooting dope in a bathroom in Detroit than have to deal with this fucking economy crap. It's I a think bunch that's of garbage. The, I think that's the plan, though, Flash, because if they get people so far in debt, it's a loan sharking game. Yeah. They get them so far in debt, they never have an ability to get out of it, in this case, sovereign debt. Um, and then they're going to turn around and raise the interest rates. Yep. It's not just going to be Visa or student loans. It's going to be the total fucking economy. They're going to be zapping all of the social services. Mm. They're, it's, it's a trap of loan sharking. And I guarantee it's the IMF and the World Bank and all these global bankers that are just yeah. going to... The money's going to be going towards the interest. That will be the condition yeah. of future payment on the loans. Right. But the money that they're using to do it with is borrowed money. <laughs> Which, that's so, why it's borrowed what time. Is it, right. It's ridiculous. It's, it's too stupid. You, you couldn't talk a bunch of eight-year-olds into to agreeing to this kind of deal if you explain it to them honestly. They go, no. But here we are, grown-ups, some of us older than others. Right, Grim? <clears throat> right, pancakes? <laughs> right, honey. <laughs> anyway, and, and we're stuck in this illusion that we're, that we're living in, and, and there's no alternative to it. And nobody really wants an alternative to it. They want to change existing rules or Bitcoin. There you go. Let's have yet another imaginary source of funds and have fun with that. But the weakness in the whole damn thing is the electricity. With no electricity, oh, you Bitcoin people don't have no money. Maybe look right? at alternatives like solar mining. Uh, maybe Bitcoin isn't it, but maybe you get into... That's I'm one not thing I was talking it. Wait, wait. I'm not saying bad about it. I'm just saying it's as real as see that this game to me, Woody, most people don't really understand how seriously I think this is all just a big joke. <laughs> it's, it's not real. But a lot of horrible things happen to people I know or have met or have known in the past, but to me, I, I don't know. I take my, my ass whippings in life and just figure it was to learn something and move on with shit. I don't drag it on and on. And, oh, I, I, you know, like uh, I could complain about things that happened as a child in a negative way, but they happened and I became what I am because of it. You know, other people pick on one thing and, and pound it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I try not to. It's not such an easy task, you know. But the world isn't very complicated like everybody says it is. It's very simple. The more simple you live, the more fun you can have. Well, ask my wife, she'll tell you. The kind of getting back to I was talking about something. I'm going to give a plug to the guy that I met that was doing the initiative process. Oh yeah, I interrupted you with some dork shit. Cool. Go well, ahead. Okay, this guy was a nice guy, um, and he wrote a book. And in fact, I helped him show him how to to build build a website. Um, so I went down to the downtown and showed him what to do on Wix.com. And he, he has a book that he self published, and he's selling it on Amazon, called the Global Utopian Kingdom. And if you go to www.theguk.com. He talks about one body, one vision, and one kingdom. Now, he yeah. gave me a copy of his book, and I will premise this, that I did read Sir Thomas More uh, uh, Utopia probably 10 times. And I probably read the last three pages 20 times. And I had this guy out to where I live. We had mesquite cheeseburgers out here. And it didn't take long to realize that he's very serious about his book, and he's very utopian, yet I'm for individual liberty, and yet this guy was for more of a utopian global vision. And where I was critical of Obama, he was thought that he was a righteous man and Hillary Clinton was a good person. And <laughs> so we were at complete odds. <laughs> yeah. And um, needless to say, we realized that it wasn't going to go anywhere to get in an argument about these things, but just to have the cheeseburgers. But um, m my point was 
it's kind of like you can't have a utopia. Um, you can't talk in my eyes. You, there's just, it's, it's kind of like the last three pages of the whole point of Sir Thomas More's utopia. Utopia doesn't exist. You can't have it. Um, it's like, well, do you mean as a joint illusion or are you talking about in a personal way? In a joint illusion, um, in the context of the book, it's an imaginary place that could never possibly exist. Oh, for everyone. Now, right. you you might envision pulling back and uh, um, resisting everything and you live in your own utopian way, but that's still an individual reflection of how you want to live. But that's not yeah, you telling yeah. me how to live. Oh no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> have I have I said any? I I've got your information on uh, minds. I didn't give you any advice. You didn't ask for any advice. And, and I know that thing, you wouldn't. But you did give snakes, me some maybe. critical thought earlier, of which you, oh. you you immediately apologized, and it was like, oh yeah, I didn't mean it to sound like I was grading you. I was just giving you uh, pointers because I know what you're doing. And and you're on the right ra- you're on the right track. You just got to start. Get started. Get some people that'll, you know, back your mouth with you and that'll be that. You know what you're looking for. I'm for uh critical thought. I'm for uh, Oh yeah, but you're for, for growth. You you know po- the necessity of the web. You're well, not just an isolationist because you're sitting in the desert. No. It's not like that. No, you're getting healthy and you're healing from whatever you went through. And now you want to build a foundation and start something new. I well, see. And, I, and I did tell you about my martial arts training and how you mm-hmm. can learn positively from your training partners. And if you have weaknesses, you can learn from them. So I will yeah. take a, I will take a, a critical thought or a positive criticism. Bye, cakes. A, Sorry. If my last 10 minutes was weak, I will say I agree. I should well, be strong. I, all I meant, see, that that was my way of speaking of it, too. And, and what it was is you got more stuttery and loss for what to say towards the end when the time was going out compared to the beginning and when you were running through that explanation of how to do that $20 thing. That was good. You, you're a good salesman, Mr. Woody. I was impressed. Well, I had, the, I had that step-by-step, step, man. It was like... Uh, mm-hmm. I had a little bit of work, and in fact, I got paid for July for doing that. Right, but all I mean is, at the end of the show, you were not so clear and flowing. You were a little more abrupt, ifing and umming about your your mind had been played. You were done. <laughs> that was a lot of work for you. You know what I mean? It was a ju- that's what you do. <laughs> like this is for me is just fucking around and having a good time. I don't know anything i just think a lot of shit and i got a lot of fucked up opinions because society does not agree with me but on the good side i'm intelligent enough to use the paperwork that has been asked uh, you know i've been required by law to get so got it then i do their little rituals don't shoot anyone don't steal anything. Don't go around picking on people and making them miserable. And life is really fucking good. <laughs> well, that's why I appreciate you letting me on your show today because not no, only let am me, I... No, 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 no. This, this, this was Vinny's show and Vinny bailed on me. So you came on so that I wouldn't have to just try to think of shit for two hours by myself. Yeah. No, it's good to talk with you. Now, not only am I a warrior, I'm also a social critic and for good cause. Um, so I think yeah, that's probably yeah. a, a wrap for yeah. me. Um, oh, okay. I got you. No I pretty much, problem. I pretty much said what I needed to. I agree with you on uh, – I don't know that I disagree with you on anything. Um, oh, well, that's kind of scary. <laughs> yeah. I be, just Be responsible for what you do to other people and yourself, period. What the fuck is there to know? I think the only don't, thing I don't do harm. The only thing I disagree with you on is probably yeah. uh, uh, just saying fuck it to everything and just saying I don't don't want to go there. <laughs> For me, oh, it's kind of like I got to get in the fray of this, man. It's like uh, 
uh, if, if I don't, uh, yeah, some of but, the people are going to get their going to get the kick, shit kicked out of them. Uh, if it and that's wasn't not fair for to them. Cirque, I would be there somewhere, but Cirque didn't. She wanted to stay here. Those were the two choices when we got together: was Denmark or America, and America lost. So. I didn't know that <laughs> at first. I didn't get that for about two weeks. Went, wait a minute. But this is a, an agreement between me and Cirque. It's not the state and all this other crap. That's just the legality shit. But the underlying thing is me and her are together. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> awesome. The story that uh, how you guys met and Mary introduced you and you went over there and i guess you had choices here or there or somewhere else and well we met on story. an ar- we we met in a link on, in an argument on a link and on it, different sides of the equation yeah. and i thought she was too nice i said you're full of shit nobody's that fucking nice you must be lying so she told me well if that's what you think fine bye <laughs> and left and uh i ran into her later in in a different format it was more art oriented and we seemed to click from that. Right on. Let me ask you this just to dive yeah. into more personal. Um, no. So if you marry her, I don't, and I don't know the legal status, uh, but you guys are yeah, together. We got married and yeah, we, but we, before all that married crap, we did, we did a deal between us that, you know, your word is your contract in the world that I live in. People at, you don't promise people shit you don't mean. If you do, you're garbage. Okay, but my point is this. Um, it's good that you guys have a social contract and a, an yeah, agreement yeah, or an was, understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if you, like my past experience, if you marry her, you marry her family. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. And it sounds like you guys don't let outside influences interrupt with your personal freedom or understanding. That's kind of my... my. No, there there aren't any. There's no in. There's no input about uh, our business from anyone. Well, and they I kind of get that about you, freedom loving yeah, folks. But they just they leave us alone to do what we're gonna do, and and they come by to visit, and they have meals, and we play music, and watch movies, video games, internet games. Are they as cool? I as always say it. Oh yeah, yeah. She's got a sister and her mom, and a couple of aunts, and an uncle, and some cousins, and. Sometimes we've had a house full where there was everybody was, that was available was here. And they're fine. We get along. I haven't had an argument with anybody in Denmark since I've been to Denmark. Uh-huh. Except sir, because we're, we're a couple. You know, couples do that every occasion. Disagree about something and somebody gets hot. It's usually me. Raise my voice. She says, don't yell at me. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm you're dealing with a, a different culture. I mean, I think uh, oh, yeah, Denmark yeah. and Europe is a lot different historically versus America, where they're you got two parties versus multiplicity. I think other people uh, appreciate other ideas and the culture well, and all that over here. It's like we we're, there's all there's all that Woody, but between me and Cirque, on top of all that crap, we we think on the basic important areas of living were very similar there's hardly any difference but on the detaily shit we're day and night but on the major important things like money and uh living and food and taking care of the dog and who's going to do what we're uh, we're equal right on well most people i don't think people treat each other all like equals so i think some people look down their nose at me or like hands, I look my, down my nose at hands because he says things I don't like all the time. But that's hands, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that, but you were si- <laughs> you I, you got me going on Cirque, and Cirque is the nicest person I know. And I've argued with her; she's not good at it. Trust me. And that comes from lack of experience because she doesn't spend a lot of time doing it. But I did. <laughs> From my yeah. take, she's a free thinker, and she doesn't care what uh, what, what you do. Yeah. Bottom line. No, <laughs> not what what. I, no, it's not about what I do. It's about what I think. You know, what I do has got limitations, of course. You know. We, you ever get your hand slapped? 
No, we depend on each other. You know, we don't like not see each other for days at a time or any of that crap. Yeah. This is a uh, seeing the same old boring old long haired guy every fucking day. <laughs> You know, and we got the animals to take care of and the little bit of garden and back there that we were doing. But outside of that, we just have fun. We're like two teenagers in a in a house that no grown-ups are watching. Huh. Well, it's that's really, very cool. Yeah, it's it, it's beyond comfort to be so um free to be myself. Because I, I was around a lot of people that wanted to tell me what to do all the time. Or pay me to do things. One or the other. And it's gone from all that to completely do all the time exactly what I want to do. No matter what. Yeah. As long as I do no harm. And that means if, if I'm hurting her feelings by doing it, doing it's not a good idea. Yeah. Well, I guess it, it beats having to deal with uh, somebody bitching at you and have like... PMS syndrome or something. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> nah, I'm just, uh, I'm just more angry than her. You know, I come from a more of a controlled, people spend a lot of time trying to tell me what to do over life, you know, and Cirque, not so much. There's a freedom to her country. She's in her own tribe, you know, amongst her own. It's different than being American. Because we have the 50 states to define us. And by God, I'm from, where am I from? <laughs> what state am I in? By God and country. You know the four corners? You can step into California, what is it? Arizona, Nevada, Utah, and Colorado. <laughs> it's all, they all meet at one point. <laughs> and, oh, Google it sometimes. You're close to it. Yeah, I think I see where it, where it comes. Uh... I Right, and I've. See, I've done all these incredible things. I lived in the Redwood Forest for a year. Nice. Um, <laughs> oh, man. I know you were up in Washington. You know what I'm talking about. I've been to the Redwood the, Forest. Probably yeah. most, one of the most incredible places I've been to. Those trees grow from the middle of California all the way, I could think, into Washington. Maybe, bet, uh, maybe beyond Washington. I'm not positive. I bet you the weed grew pretty big, too, out there. Um, size, I don't. I wasn't a grower. I, it was way different than the reason I was there, but we was always high. <laughs> there was plenty of it. You couldn't even sell it. There was so damn much around. I used to work down so, in Arcata, California every once in a while. Oh, wow. I lived in Crescent City. I've been there, passed through there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Arcata's familiar. And where, what else was it? Further south, Santa saying it's something ah too many memories i've I, been so many fucking places i almost died um about a half hour outside of arcade i was going up the mountain to get to redwood or, or excuse yeah. me i'm not redding and redding. Uh, yeah 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 and the semi truck came around a bend and i thought he was coming kind of fast coming down and i thought he was kind of he came about three feet into my lane to the point that if I would have kept going down that path, he would have taken me out head on. Wow. And I had to take the steering wheel and pull it as far right as I could, as fast as I could, with the edge of the mountain to the right of me. And, uh, yeah, you, you think that you would panic into that situation about ready to die. Um, but it was probably one of the more calmer feelings knowing that my first thought I was married at the time that I got to see my wife and my dog again. And it was pretty peaceful. I, I, I got another question for you. Yep. Because you, you were in, in Washington for all that time. And, and you split. So I would assume something not pleasant might be happening out that way. Is that safe to say that? It's the tr overall trend. Um, it's a false belief system that somehow um, more big, more corrupt government... Um, Oh, it's going to fix everything? Yeah, I mean, I was working for uh, the county, and I was working and seeing huge amounts of people that they were importing for work, namely JavaScript developers. And I talked to so many people. Um, the traffic became nightmarish. 
Um, it only got worse over 10 years. Um, with you got this many terrible drivers, you just fear for your life. It the people are starting to become like rude, like in my eyes, New Yorkish. Um, okay. The 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 people are getting even immediate people just becoming brainwashed and dumber and dumber. That I said, you know what? I'm I'm done. I've seen well, enough. What do you foresee happening where you left? I mean, can you sum it up? And I'm just trying to keep you on until the last of the show but you really got good opinions i agree with a lot of what you say too what do i see i what do you do you know what do you foresee now that you're gone and you can look on where you left from you got a different perspective of it because you're not in it it's called the mona lisa syndrome you know you stand a couple thousand miles away and you can see the whole damn thing so much more clearly than you can when you're right in the middle of it I see uh, the young future generations growing up being indoctrinated by a failed public education system. I see them not getting any smarter because they're not teaching anything any different, yet other people are learning um, some certain skills and they're still importing workers to the point that maybe their parents are teaching them coding jobs or whatever the jobs that are in demand. And I see this other group of people not even learning any work ethic to the point that their parents are now filling the roles or the 30 or 40 year olds are taking the jobs that used to be teenagers that at least got some work experience to the point that oh, yeah. when they do get jobs, they're going to be low-paying jobs that aren't going to meet the cost of living there to the point that they're going to be subservient to the the uh, imported workers that are dri- driving up the markets, uh, uh, the, the six and $800,000 houses to the million-dollar yeah. homes. I don't see it ending good. I see... Uh, I see Can subs- I ask you this? Yes. Well, all right. You, you, you've already answered it, but... That explains all this Antifa versus what is it they call them the the good boys or something in Portland. What is it? The two sides. One side's for Trump and the other side's for no borders and oh the God and country insanity. people versus the ignorant hate filled liberals. Is that what it is? Okay. Well, I, <laughs> names, but there's two sides, right? There you go. But that that's what they're bringing it to. That looks like civil war to me. What do you think it is? Well, I'm you... not there. I'm not there in the states, so I'm seeing it from way far away. And okay, maybe I'm taking it too serious. Let me answer your your question with a, a question. I'm not over in Europe, but from what I'm seeing, I'm seeing Merkel open up the borders, and everybody's like, "Yay! Well, they just want a better place to live." Yet. We're creating wars in their country, and then they open up the borders, and then they got real live terrorists and real uh, fucked up ideologies. And yet, I see these incidents that happen, and I see that as civil war in Europe. So, how is what yeah. is happening in Europe any different than what's happening here in America? If that's happening in Europe, how is this not civil war over here via globalism? And exactly how they're fucking up society with the agenda and immigration problems and all of the above. Keep us fighting amongst ourselves. I see this as a process of assimilation, and they're doing it on purpose, just like they yeah. wrecked the, okay. the way of life with Native Americans. They did it in America, they did it in Canada, they do it by destroying culture. And uh, I don't care if it's here, there, or abroad. This hey, is what cakes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was reading out loud at the top of my lungs. I see it. We're, and it's it's the end up anyway. Thanks. That was Woody. Thanks for hanging with me on the dark table this week. I appreciate it. All right, man. Thanks for having me. We'll talk and to you later. If, yeah, if you ever wanted to do another one, let me know ahead of time. And if nobody else is doing it, I'll do it. Well, I was glad to fill in. Uh, I'm, I'm a opinionated yeah. asshole, so thanks a lot. Well, if you, yeah, if you feel like getting on the radio, we're doing Grim a favor. And I had a lot of fun yakking. There's more shit. We could find many, many topics, me and you. And uh, I wanted to say thanks a lot for showing up. So, appreciate it. All right, Flash. Ciao and for now. then tomorrow night, we've got <laughs> Miss Mary doing her rocket chair thing. Uh on the rocket chair show 
and then there's nothing scheduled until Friday night. But, um, hey, maybe somebody else will come up. Woody came forward and gave it a shot and went through a couple of fuck-ups. But he got to it, and he's doing pretty good on the RLM. I, I like talking to him. Very interesting little fellow, that Mr. Woody. And uh, his problem with rats can only be solved by sealing up the property. Rats can eat through any fucking thing. A seven-pound rat can collapse its bones and fit through a hole the size of a quarter. So rats are, um, they're bad. But there are ways to keep them out, but no way to contain. Once they're in, you're you're pretty much ratted. <laughs> I guess that's why they call it ratted out. <laughs> there's no there's no solution to the problem. Well, Miss. Mr. Kissinger has a solution. You guys just keep drinking that water. You keep eating those GMOs. In 20 more years, you won't know what a souffle is. <laughs> you might not even know what an egg is. But that's all in the future. <laughs> right, honey? <laughs> not Maybe not our, you know, in our daily life. But, oh, hey, thank you, Miss Kate, for hanging in there with us. And, uh. Anytime someone wants to commit a crime, they put on a government costume, says Grimner. That anti-police man, Mr. Grimner. Yeah, I share, I share your lack of enthusiasm for the authority. <laughs> they, they just seem like a bunch of bullies looking for a fight. and Otherwise, they serve no purpose. They need to be done away with, but... It's too late. <laughs> okay, folks, I'm going to go now. <laughs> I'm going to go make my wife crazy with my crazy ideas. But uh, there's my dog saying goodnight to you all. It's 9 o'clock out here in Denmark. And uh, time to call it a day. See you later. <laughs>